In this video, we're going to talk about the triggering system on the RTB2000 and how to set up the different triggers. So if you look at the front panel up in the top right hand corner, you have the trigger area. Um, of course, you have a number of different settings here. One of the first ones is just this trigger button and you can control the trigger either through the um, front panel knobs and buttons, um, knobs and keys, or through the touch screen. Um, we'll go ahead and go through the buttons and that's going to pop up a menu for the trigger system. And here you can see um, one of the first things that's offered is an auto or norm that stands for normal. There's also a button for auto and normal um, as well. And kind of the difference between auto and normal, auto will try to um, find a trigger after a certain period of time. And so it's just going to automatically refresh the display. Normal is only going to trigger when it actually sees the trigger conditions met. And so each of these have their use cases and when they make the most sense to, to work. And I'll show you a little bit about how they differ here in a second. In terms of the next piece, you have different trigger types. And so you can step through edge or pulse with video pattern, line triggering, timeout trigger, etc. Um, we'll look at these here in a little more detail in a second. Um, the next piece is the source. And so the source lets you trigger on um, different channels. Um, you can trigger on an external uh, trigger in as well. And this is a pretty important one to pay attention to to make sure that you get it properly set up. Next up is the slope. Now this is going to be specific to something like an edge trigger. You can have a rising edge, a falling edge, or an alternating on either edge. Um, for the trigger level, this is a really important one. And so when you look at the tri trigger level, there is an actual knob for that. And so as I change the trigger level, and you can see my trigger level go off screen over here, um, now we don't have a stable trigger anymore. And this is where that auto and normal kind of come into play. You can see that something's happening, but we just don't have that stable trigger in and of itself. If I click the auto normal button right now, you'll see it's not going to trigger because the conditions aren't met. It's not going through that trigger level. So you could move the trigger back down using the um, level knob, or you could actually, or you could grab it on the touch screen. Or I like to just use this push on the button and it'll automatically find a 50% area. Now if we look at this, we can change our trigger up in here. Um, so instead of an edge trigger, let's look at something like a pulse width trigger. And so a pulse width trigger in this case, um, we wanna make sure that we have our trigger level uh, down on the screen uh, within the waveform. So we'll go ahead and pull it down. Um, for this one, I would have had a um, rising pulse. And I want, you can define whether it's a greater than, a less than, an equal to, a not equal to, an inside, an outside and then you can define it by time. And this is a great example of where a pulse width trigger comes in handy where you can get a very stable trigger where we have a bunch of tiny pulses coming out and then a lot of idle time, which is one big pulse. And in this case, I'm saying trigger when we see that big pulse width going over 400 microseconds. So this is a quick overview of the um, trigger system on the RTB 2000.